Um, Mr. Volkoff uh, handed out invitations to the players that they felt were going to be the uh, most instrumental in trying to uh, make this the best team that we could make it. Uh, for these players, it will be the first time that I meet them other than the first three that I met this evening uh, at the gym here. So when I get a chance to meet them and see them in practice, that will be my first time actually seeing them play. I have watched some tape on a couple of the players, uh, but it's not the same as watching them in practice every day. So I look forward to when we begin practice for ourselves. Well, I understand that a couple of the players will be with us with the national team, uh, and they're here working out to get their conditioning much better. Uh, which is very admirable of them to do that, to come early and work with the young team to try and get their conditioning to be better for when we start practice. Um, I think the young team um, is in the beginning stages. This was just practice number five, I think, for them overall, five practices. Uh, so they will continue to grow, and the coach is putting in the pieces of his offense and the pieces of his defense, and now over the next few weeks as they continue to develop you're going to see them put four on four then five on five and then it will start to take shape normally in the beginning of practice training camp sometimes you look at the team and you go oh my goodness what is this but then eventually you see it all seems to come together after practicing and practicing together many days so you can't judge them early on after five practices we'll wait a week or so and then talk about them the, uh, the same thing happened in the United States, uh, going back uh, three Olympics, four Olympics back, uh, and world championships. Uh, the United States was not getting their best players uh, to want to play. And it was because it was a combination. Uh, one, the selection committee did not do a great job in selecting the people that they picked. Uh, and the second thing was, at that time, the players that were selected had a different mentality playing for their country, playing for the United States, was not as important as it should have been to them. And as a result, we did not play as well as we could have played. We were beaten, and we lost our prestige as the best basketball country in the world. And then a man named Jerry Colangelo came in and took over and was put in charge. And he went out after the best players and said, we need you to represent our country. And once you get people like Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, uh, Dwight Howard, once they commit, uh, Jason Kidd, uh, and say that, yes, they want to play, they want to be part of it, they want to try to win a gold medal, then it makes it easy. Then the other people will follow them. So the leaders have to be the ones that want to be part of it and set the tone so that others want to be a part of it. Now, in the United States, they've done a good job with the organization of having the best players wanting to play, and then the younger team coming up after them will replace these players as they eventually step aside. When Kobe Bryant decides, that's it, I don't want to play in the Olympics anymore, then you've got people like Kevin Durant ready to come in and take his place. So the system has to be built, and it has to be done the right way. And the same thing can happen here. It can happen in any country. Players who may not want to play now, you can't worry about them. You have to move on. If they don't want to be there, they're not going to help your team anyhow. You have to have guys who want to be there and that want to play for the country. This team is being run. They have a head coach for this team. And my job in coming here was to watch the players with Mr. Volkoff and then without interrupting and messing up the coach's practice, if there's something that I can say or put in, or if he allows me to do one thing here or there. That's what my intentions are. That's the way it should be. He organizes the practice every day. He's had them from day one. He knows what they can do and what he wants to try and get done when he coaches them eventually. So I'm here as a spectator and a uh, part-time participant whenever I think it's the right time or he thinks it's the right time for me to put my two cents in. Well, I've watched the uh, I've watched games that they played from you know, the past tournaments, uh, and we have a, we have a d difficult uh, group, but it's not insurmountable. That doesn't mean that we can't go out and play and, uh, and beat the teams that are in our group, but we have to play together as a team. Uh, we have to be good defensively. Uh, we have to execute at the offensive end of the floor, but most importantly, we have to play together. We have to 
we have to cover for each other, we have to share the ball with each other, and we have to pull for each other to do well. And that's the beginning of it. That will come hopefully through the practices and through working with each other all the time. Uh, but, you know, uh, we have to play everybody else in our group just like the other people do. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. I haven't seen any problems yet uh, since I haven't seen him play. So when we get to practice, uh, if, if there's a problem with any position, then you have to coach around that. You have to play to your strengths. And uh, whatever, if it's a center, if it's a power forward, if it's a small forward, shooting guard, point guard, if there's a problem where you see that perhaps you're not as strong there as maybe you'd like to be, you make adjustments. You run different plays. You don't run as many plays for that position. Perhaps you put a defender in that position more than an offensive player. Uh, all of that I have to see. I haven't seen it yet, so it's unfair to answer now until I see it. Thank you. Okay. Думаю, что впервые тренер такого уровня показал, как надо относиться к игрокам, как надо любить баскетбол и как надо мыслить в баскетболе для того, чтобы была команда, чтобы создавался коллектив, в котором росли бы звезды. Сегодня мы прекрасно понимаем, что благодаря инициативе нашего президента Александра Волкова, Майк Фрателло и его команда тренеров в ближайшее время уже точно появится на горизонте национальной сборной команды Украины. Он э, долго изучал наш украинский баскетбол. И сегодня, собираясь сюда, в Южный, мы уже в самолете узнали, что Майк Фрателло готов проводить мастер-класс. Он готовился, изучал статистику, технику, игры. И... Просто у меня уверенность, что от контакта и работы с таким тренером и наш тренерский состав подтянется. Особенно будет полезно это молодым игрокам, которые будут иметь, как говорится, напутственную звезду к самым большим вершинам мирового баскетбола. И надеюсь, что в ближайшее время Майк Фрателло со своей клиникой Появится на сайте Федерации баскетбола Украины. Это материал его эксклюзивный, это многолетний творческий труд его работы. И я присутствовал при том разговоре, когда он дал добро нашему президенту, что на сайте будут публиковаться его тактические, практические мастер-классы для того, чтобы легче было тренерам достучаться до понятия баскетбола. Поэтому хочу пожелать Майку Фрателло вместе с нашим президентом Александром Волковым больших успехов и в той эволюционной перестройке, которую задумал Александр Волков, чтобы она свершилась.